In this video, we're going to start looking at how to predict the products of different types of reactions. So we need to start looking at how to recognize the types of reactions and then how to write those. So let's look at a problem that you might see. So it tells you that solutions of copper two chloride and sodium carbonate are mixed. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and write out the reactants. So the copper two chloride, remember that the two Roman numeral is the two plus charge on the copper and chloride is a one minus. So copper two chloride would be Cu Cl2 to make that a neutral compound. And we know it's a solution, so remember we want to put its little uh, symbol on there that's Aq. And leave a little space, we're going to need to balance this, so I like to leave a little space before each compound. Our second uh, compound is sodium carbonate, so sodium is a 1 plus, carbonate is a 2 minus, so it's going to be Na2. CO3, and it's also AQ. So when you look at that, we need to figure out what type of a reaction this is. So look at it for a moment. Look at your reference table if you need to. Pause. So hopefully you looked at this and said this looks like it is a double replacement. It's two two-part compounds, and so we have to figure out which ones go together. Remember that in order to make a neutral ionic compound, we have to put a positive ion with a negative ion. So we want to put the positive ion from one compound with the negative ion of the other. So the negative ion from this compound with the positive ion from this one. And then we've already got our charges. We just need to figure out what the products are. We've got chloride and sodium. Remember nomenclature, the metal or the positive ion always gets named first. So it's going to be sodium chloride. And you want to think about the name first. You don't necessarily have to write it, but you want to think about the formula because you have to think about the charges. So we know sodium is a plus one, chloride is a minus one, and the formula for sodium chloride is NaCl. And then for the other product, it's going to be copper and carbonate. The copper will keep the same charge, so it's going to be copper two carbonate. So when you look at that, it's copper's got a 2 plus charge, carbonate is a 2 minus, so it's going to be CuCO3. Now we also need to go ahead and balance this. So you can see that there's one copper, one carbonate. There are two sodiums and two chlorines, so we can put a 2 here. Now we know that it's a double replacement reaction. We figured out the names of the products. A demonstration so you can see what this looks like when we put these two reactants together. And that'll help you understand how we write these reactions. In this demonstration, we're mixing together solutions of copper two chloride and sodium carbonate. So first I'm going to put in the copper two chloride in the test tube on the left. And you can see that that is a clear blue liquid, clear blue solution. Now I'm going to add the sodium carbonate. And you can see that that's clear and colorless. So I'm just going to squirt it in there. And hopefully what you see is that a solid began to form in the mixture of the two solutions. When we see a solid coming from two aqueous solutions being put together, we call that a precipitate. So now looking at this reaction, we saw when we put the two chemicals together, they were clear. One was clear and blue, one was clear and colorless. And we put them together and ended up with this cloudy blue appearing stuff. And remember the cloudiness is called a precipitate. So we need to figure out which of our products is the precipitate. So what we want to do is we want to look at our solubility rules. Remember to use those, you want to look up the second part of the name first, so look up chloride. 
And then you want to see if that's soluble or insoluble and check the exceptions, don't forget. So look and see if you can figure out which one of these two would be our precipitate. All right, so sodium chloride, you probably even remember that this is soluble, and there's water in this system because these were solutions in water. So the NaCl is actually going to be AQ because it's a solution. But hopefully you saw that when you looked up carbonates that most of those are insoluble. So if it's insoluble, it is a solid, and that is the precipitate. And so that's where we give it that symbol. And that's the complete balanced reaction. So we said that this was a double replacement reaction. The names of the products we figured out. We figured out which product was the precipitate. What you want to remember is that insoluble ionic compounds will form precipitates during reactions, and those precipitates are solids. Let's look at another reaction that is a double replacement. So solutions of copper 2 sulfate and sodium chloride are mixed. So let's go ahead again. Remember to think about the charges before you start writing the reactants. So copper has a 2 plus charge. Sulfate has a 2 minus. So it's going to be CuSO4. And it is AQ because it's a solution. And then sodium chloride, hopefully you remember from our last example, sodium is a 1 plus. Chloride's a 1 minus, so it's NaCl. Remember with the double replacement, the positive ion from one will end up with the negative ion from the other. And the positive ion here ends up with this negative ion. We need to think about balanced charges. So if we have copper with a 2 plus charge, it's going to be copper 2 chloride. So remember to think of it in terms of the name and then write the formula so you're not tempted to not balance those charges. So copper 2 chloride, copper with a 2 plus, chloride with a 1 minus, it's going to be CuCl2. And then our other one is going to be sodium sulfate. And hopefully you see sodium's a plus 1, sulfate's a minus 2, so it's going to be Na2SO4. And in order to balance that, we need a 2 in front of the NaCl. And since this tells us that sodium chloride is a solution, that's going to be AQ. Now I want you to see this again as a demonstration. So watch this. Let's look at our other reaction. So in this demonstration, we're going to look at mixtures of copper 2 sulfate and sodium chloride. So I'm going to put in the copper 2 sulfate. This is the test tube on the right. And you can see that that is a clear blue solution. And then I'm going to add the sodium chloride. And you can see that that is also clear and colorless. When I put in the sodium chloride, there is no precipitate. In fact, it appears that nothing has really changed. That is when we say that we have not had a reaction. Now you can see, again, I put a clear blue solution with a clear colorless solution. Uh, only this time, it didn't produce a precipitate. So the question is, where is the precipitate? There's not one. So both of these, there's not a precipitate, there's not a solid, so both of those are soluble, which means that they get the little AQ uh, symbol for those. So let's talk about this a little bit more. We figured out that there was no precipitate in the names of the products. The reason that there's not a precipitate is when we mix two solutions of ionic compounds, we say that no reaction has occurred. And the reason that we do that is because remember that when ionic compounds dissolve in water, they split apart and form their ions. When they don't reform to produce a precipitate, they're just still floating around in there. And we'll learn a little bit more about this towards the end of the unit. Let's take a look at another one. I'd like you to start trying this. So here are your instructions. Follow For the following reactions, write the reaction including all the appropriate symbols. 
If there's no reaction, we write NR. We balance them using the lowest whole number coefficients. So here's our reaction. So pause, write the reactants, see if you can figure out the products, and then start the video again and I'll go through it with you. All right, so hopefully you remember that silver nitrate, silver is a one plus, nitrate is a one minus. So that's AgNO3, and it's a solution, so it's Aq. And then we have sodium sulfate, sodium's a one plus, sulfate is a two minus, so that's going to be Na2SO4, and again, that's Aq. So looking at, at this, draw the arrow, and you can see that silver will end up with sulfate, so we're going to have silver sulfate. And just think about the name and then think about the compound. Our other product's going to be sodium nitrate. And so what we want to do is think about those charges to make a neutral compound. So silver is a plus one, sulfate is a two minus, so it's going to be Ag2. SO4, and then sodium nitrate. Sodium's a plus one, nitrate's a minus one, so it's NaNO3. So let's go ahead and look at how we tell whether a reaction occurred. Remember that we need to think about whether we ended up with a precipitate. So what we want to do is check out the solubility rules for both of these compounds. So pause and do that. So you should see that sulfates are insoluble with silver, and so that would be a solid. Nitrates, especially with group one, tend to be solutions, so that's AQ. Now we're not done with this yet, but we need to go ahead and change our coefficients to give us a balanced reaction. So we have the right number of nitrates, the right number of sulfates, but our sodium and our silvers are out of balance. So let's put a two here to balance silver. So now silver's balanced. Nitrate and sodium are not, so we can just put a two here. If you're more comfortable making the little table, by all means do it. So you just do it the way that you're comfortable with. So let's try another one, all right? All right, for this one, see if you can write the whole thing from start to finish, look at the solubility rules, figure it out, and then start it back and check to see how you did. All right, so for this one, we've got solutions of ammonium chloride and lead to acetate. So ammonium is a one plus, chloride's a one minus, And so that's going to be NH4Cl, and that's a solution, so it's AQ. And then lead 2 is a 2 plus charge. Acetate is a 1 minus, so that's going to be PbC2H3O2 with the 2 so that it's balanced. And then that is also AQ. So when we look at that, we're going to end up with lead 2 chloride. And so lead has a plus 2 charge. Chloride has a minus 1, so it's going to be PbCl2. And then our other product is going to be ammonium and acetate, so the other positive with the other negative ion. And ammonium has a plus 1 charge. Acetate has a 1 minus. So that's going to be NH4C2H3O2. So looking at that, you can see that everything is balanced but the Cl and the acetate. So let's start with our polyatomic and balance that. That's going to give us two ammoniums and two acetates. So if we put a two here, that balances the ammonium and the chloride, and that gives us a balanced reaction. Remember that last step to check the solubility rules. When you look, chlorides typically are soluble, but lead to is one of your exceptions, so you want to make that a solid. That's your precipitate. And then ammonium acetate, ammonium compounds, and acetates tend to be solutions, which are AQ. So let's try another one. 
Again, I'd like you to try to set this one up on your own. So write the reactants and then fill in the products and balance it and add the symbols and then start the video and check. Hopefully you can just zip through the end and see if you got the right answer. All right, so we have copper two sulfate, copper's a two plus, sulfate's a two minus, so that's going to be CuSO4, and again, that's a solution, so it's AQ. And then iron three, three plus, and chloride, which is one minus, that is FeCl3, and that's also AQ. So we're going to go ahead and put those together. Remember that they will switch partners. So the positive from one ends up with the negative from the other. So we're going to end up with copper, and it's going to keep the same charge, copper two chloride. And then our other thing is going to be iron three sulfate. Don't forget to always write these compounds with the positive ions first, because otherwise your college chemistry professor will think I was not a very good teacher, and we don't want that. So copper two chloride, copper's a plus two, chloride's a minus one, so it's CuCl2. And then iron three sulfate, iron is a three plus, sulfate's a two minus, so that's going to be Fe2, SO4, three. So let's look at our balancing. We've got the three sulfates on this side and one on this side. So if we put a three here, that gives us three coppers. And then we need to put a three here to fix that. And that gives us six chlorides and two irons. We can put a two here and take care of that problem. Now we need to look at our solubility rules. Hopefully you see that chlorides are soluble, including copper two chloride. So that's going to be AQ. And then iron three sulfate is also AQ. Remember that when both of these are AQ, there's not a precipitate or a solid. That's going to be no reaction. So to get that fully correct, you need to write no reaction for that one. All right, one more. All right, so looking at that, go ahead and write the reaction, and then we'll give it a try. So we've got lead two nitrate, so lead's a two plus, nitrate is a one minus, and so that's going to be Pb NO3, two, and that's AQ because it's a solution. And then we're gonna go ahead and put sodium, which is a one plus, iodide, which is a one minus, so it's going to be NAI. And I think I'm gonna make the little top and bottom on that so it's not too confusing. And again, that's a solution, so that's going to be AQ. Remember that with double replacement, you're gonna switch the partners, so you're going to have uh, lead to iodide and so that's going to be PB I2 and then you're going to have sodium nitrate so that's sodium's a plus one nitrates a minus one so Na NO3 now we've got to go ahead and balance this thing there are two nitrates on that side on the left, so we're going to put two on the right, and then if we put a two here in front of NaI, that balances the sodium and the iodide. Now, looking at our solubility rules, iodides are soluble except lead two is one of the exceptions, so that's going to be a solid, and then NaNO3, sodium nitrate, that is AQ, that's a solution, it does not form a solid. So just make sure that you get lots of practice when you do your pre-lab for the double replacement lab. You'll get lots of practice doing these, and then you'll get to see what happens when you actually do them in the lab. See you in class.